podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Hope springs eternal in the mind of the fisherman, particularly when he's angling to catch a rainbow. Rainbow trout, that is. It's what's cooking next in Flavor in Sea. Flavor in Sea was made possible by Got to be NC Agriculture, the official state identity program for products grown and processed by farmers and value-added food companies in North Carolina. When you want the best, it's got to be NC. The Currituck County Department of Travel and Tourism. The Currituck County Outer Banks. More value, more excitement, more than you imagined. Additional support was provided by the following. There's no Main Street, no zip code, and you won't find it on a map. But our place is just as real as every mouth-watering morsel grown, raised, or harvested in North Carolina. Welcome to Flavor and Sea, the heart and soul of local food. Ah, the beautiful rainbow trout. So called because of their multicolored hue. Their very name conjures up visions of unspoiled natural beauty and peaceful hours spent casting a line in clear mountain streams. Presidents and potentates have answered their siren call. Poets have immortalized them and frustrated fishermen curse them. But somehow they always return, called back to the stream by the allure of the elusive rainbow. The rainbow trout is actually native only to the rivers and streams west of the Rocky Mountains, but they're so popular you can now find them in trout streams like this on every continent on the planet except Antarctica, and I've heard rumors about that. Rainbow trout are part of the salmon family. They're high in protein and in heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids. There are more than 3,000 miles of trout streams in the North Carolina mountains. Some of the best are found in Haywood County near Waynesville. Waynesville is surrounded by the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, the Pisgah National Forest, and the Blue Ridge Parkway with its magnificent views of Cold Mountain. Yep, that Cold Mountain, the one made famous by the best-selling novel and star-studded movie. Waynesville is a town filled with shops, restaurants, art galleries, and of course, fly fishing outfitters dedicated to the pursuit of the rainbow trout. Now, I like fishing as much as the next person, but sometimes I don't want to work quite so hard for my dinner. That's where Sunburst Trout Farm, just outside of town, comes in. Founded in 1948 and set deep in the heart of the stunning Pisgah National Forest, this three-generation, family-owned company has grown into one of the leading suppliers of farm-raised rainbow trout on the East Coast. It all started when Dick Jennings began visiting his grandfather's land in western North Carolina back in 1931. He fell in love with the mountains. After returning from World War II and against all advice from his family, Dick decided to change his life. He quit Yale University and headed to Haywood County to start Sunburst Trout. He never looked back, and today Sunburst is a thriving business with a worldwide reputation. Today, Sunburst Trout is run by Dick's daughter, Sally, her husband, and their two sons. Sally, the mountains and the lake, what a beautiful location that you get to come to work to every day. It is and beautiful. Tell me how this helps you to raise your trout. 
Well, the water quality, which is the most important thing about raising rainbow trout. And when Dad came here in the early 60s to find a place to expand his trout farm, he based his decision on this, the, the purity of the water, it's just as clean as it gets, and the volume. It, we have huge velocity, six to 12,000 gallons a minute, falling off the other end of this lake via the dam. Okay. So this is actually Lake Logan behind me coming um, right out of the Pigeon River and then it dumps back into the river on the bottom side. Okay, okay, and when it goes down on the other side, down the dam, mm -hmm. how does that affect your trout? Well, it affects it real well. Rainbow trout love lots of volume when it comes to water and they need cold temperatures. Okay. And this water stays relatively cold year round. Right. Um, it fluctuates a bit in some of the warmer months, but for the most part, it's just ideal for growing trout. At the end, where does the water go? Well, it goes through our whole system, of course, and then we filter out impurities at the tail end and put it back in the in the river, hopefully just as, uh, as clean as when we got it out. Okay, I would love to see that whole process from beginning to end. I'm going to take you down and show you the whole thing and show you what we do environmentally and, and uh, taking my dad's mission and carrying it forward, I hope. Let's go see it. Okay, great. The process starts with harvesting the fish. First, they have to be corralled at one end of the raceway through a process called crowding. Sally picked it up from there. So Lisa, this is us harvesting trout that are going to be processed and shipped out today. And this is our second harvest of the day. And as you can see, the fish are brought down into a smaller space. It makes for a lot easier netting. And it takes two of them to do it, one in the water, one on the uh, side of the raceway. And they net them right into those barrels, and there's already ice in there, so it's a really great way to, to harvest. And the ice is it's a slurry, and okay. it's uh, there's water in there, so we measure by displacement. And they go from here directly into the processing house, and they're in a cooler in about 20 minutes after that. So it's a fast turnover to get the trout from the pond into the cooler and subsequently to the plate. Right, as quick as possible, so your your fish are as fresh as possible. Exactly, because that's what we want. We want it to be the freshest product we can possibly get to. And about how much are you harvesting at a time? Uh, this will be probably uh, 600 pounds now, I think, at this particular time. Okay, okay, so then you do that twice a day, 600 pounds and 600 pounds. And on a really big day, we might harvest three times, but uh, today this is going to be our second and last harvest of today. Okay, I'd love to see the process in place. Okay, great, let's head in. Okay. From the raceway, it's just a quick trip to the processing room where the fish are quickly filleted. Then each fillet is trimmed by hand. Okay, Chris, what is this step in the trout farming process? All right, this step here is where we take the fillets after they come out of the fillet machine uh -huh. and uh, we trim all the, the tail pieces and uh, the extra, extra parts of ribs and stuff that the fillet machine misses. Okay, now are all your fillets hand trimmed? Yes, all of the fillets are hand trimmed. Okay. Uh, everybody, uh, they come through the table and we'll look at every fillet and make sure that there's no loose skin, uh, ribs, or anything around the outside edge of them before they go over here to be washed. So how do I hand trim it? I, I, I fish, but I didn't ever have to do my own fillet in. <laughs> all right. Uh, now like on this fillet here, there's some stuff on the tail. We'll just trim that right off there. All right. Okay. And then right along the bottom here, just take a slight cut right across through there, remove that. Now, does it matter if I get that fin? No. Okay. All right. Is that good? good? And your fillet doesn't have any ribs in it, but mine's got just a few ribs right up in the upper end there. So you're going to get that part. Just take the knife and just kind of just flip those out, trim that off a little bit, and then it's ready to go into the tub. Well, that wasn't too bad. All right. <laughs> I'm going to try one more. Okay, go ahead. So let's see, tail. Tail. And then that little part right there. That little part right there. All right, you're a lot quicker, so I don't think I'll get a job, but right, at least if work. I go fishing, maybe I can trim my own Yep, you'll be, able to, you'll be able to do your own now. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure about that. I think I'll leave it to the pros. From here, the pin bones are removed by machine, then the fillets are washed, grated, bagged, and put into cold storage. Some restaurants prefer whole fish, so they have to be sorted and weighed. The entire process from netting to chilling takes less than an hour. Now that's fresh fish. Not all of the trout is shipped out fresh. A good bit of it is smoked first. Now there's a real art to smoking fish, so I got Sally to walk me through the process. 
Sally, look at this beautifully smoked trout. What is the process? Doesn't it look yummy? It's beautiful. This is a hot smoked trout. We do it in about 200 degrees and it's smoked for about uh, four or five hours. And it just came off. It's hot and has to be cooled down. And then we put it in, in a really pretty vacuum pack bag and then it's ready to be sold to retail or go to a chef. Now, what does the smoking process do to the trout? It completely changes the whole profile of it. Uh, obviously, it's cooked as opposed to our raw fillets which go out. And this particular flavor is it's done in a, a hickory smoke. So it gives us a, gives it a light, a rich, delicate, smoky taste. Little yeah. woody taste. And it. then we have our secret blend of spices on top. And it's a, it's just a delicious smoked product that doesn't overwhelm the fish. You can still taste that. Right. But you also pick up the other flavors with it. It's great to eat by itself, right hot off this rack, or to put in a salad, or um, in a uh, roll. There are just many, many different ways that you can, you can do with it. it. Do you only do hot smoked? No, we do a cold smoked as well, and it's a totally different product. In result, more like a Nova Lox. So something great with a bagel, for oh, okay. example. Okay, bagel and Lox. Mm -hmm. And then we also smoke a jerky, which is, uh, you think of jerky as always being beef, but actually trout makes a wonderful jerky. Okay, well, uh, great to know, and it's hot in here, so let's move on. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Some of that smoked trout ends up in the smoked trout dip made here at Sunburst. Same goes for the fresh fillets. Sunburst produces a whole range of pre-seasoned fresh fillets. Today, the culinary staff is working on something really special, trout roe, better known to you and me as trout caviar. Sunburst chef James Flora showed me how it's made. All right, James, what are we going to do with this beautiful orange fish roe? Well, we're going to make trout caviar. How do you do it? You turn the open side down, natural uh -huh. opening, uh -huh. turn it down toward the screen and rub gently. Rub and gently. the blue guys pop right through. They really do. Yeah, amazing, amazing how strong they are. Because they don't break, they're just popping right out. Okay, and wait till then. you see what happens when they go through. All right, show it to me. Let me get this membrane out of the way. Okay. Look at this. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. Oh, let's get some crackers and have really? an appetizer. <laughs> but first, James had to finish the process of turning these gorgeous orange eggs into caviar. Here's how it works. The eggs are weighed, then the precise amount of salt and sugar is calculated and added. It's gently mixed in, then allowed to sit for a while. After that, the eggs are spread out to dry. Then, and only then, are we ready to taste. Let's give it a try. Need some champagne. <gasps> yeah, we do. James, that is some delicious caviar. Good. You did good. <laughs> After tasting that caviar and seeing all the wonderful products the Sunburst crew creates, I couldn't wait to try out some of the different recipes developed by head chef Charles Hudson. Okay, Charles, I'm excited to be here cooking with you, especially working with some trout because I gotta be honest with you, I don't cook a lot of fish. Well, I have a great recipe. Um, trout is very versatile in this recipe. Uh, we're gonna do a pan seared sunburst trout filet. Uh, that'll be served over uh, wilted greens and with a smoked tomato vinaigrette and we'll make everything except wilting the greens in this pan right here. Well, that so, sounds easy. It is. Okay, uh, what, what do you need me to do? If you will season this filet with uh, a little bit of salt and pepper we have here. I've got the pan heating up. I'm going to go ahead and add my oil. I believe the recipe uh, way we term it is when the oil starts to dance in the pan or shimmer. Um, we want to get the pan hot first, which we've already done. Uh, we want to get that oil nice and hot. Now I noticed that the skin is on the fish. The skin is on the fish and I like to cook the fish uh, with the skin because um, I believe there's a nice little layer of um, uh, good fat in between the skin and the fillet okay. that uh, helps flavor the fish uh, a little bit more. And if you take the skin off before you cook it, you might lose out on a little bit of that of flavor. That good flavor. Yeah. So do you start with skin down or up? Well, it depends on how I'm going to serve it. Uh, if I were going to serve this in a restaurant, I would start with the skin side down okay. um, and get the skin nice and crisp okay. and then flip it over and do the flesh side um, until it's a nice brown 
color. Okay. Um, but in this case, I'm actually, uh, I'm going to start with the flesh side because I love the, the pretty color. Okay. Um, and I don't mind eating the skin crisp or not. All right, Charles, how long do you cook the fish? Uh, usually probably about three minutes a side. Uh, it's a very quick cooking fish. And if you notice, I'm swirling the pan around a little bit while it's in there. That helps get an even brown to uh, the finished For color. For the entire piece of the mm -hmm. fish. OK. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and Lisa, our beautiful, your beautifully seasoned trout fillet is finished cooking. Now, Looks good. <laughs> it's the seasoning. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our vinaigrette. So if you'll uh, place those onions into the pan for okay. me. Just some red onion? Yeah, it's red onion, thinly sliced. Okay. Uh, and stir them around a little bit with that spoon. Okay, we're going to cook those until they're uh, translucent. Uh, probably take couple three minutes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more oil to the pan. We are making a vinaigrette. So this is like a the vinaigrette's like a warm salad dressing. Absolutely it's like a uh, like a uh, warm spinach salad with a hot bacon dressing mm -hmm. or mustard hot mustard dressing. Uh -huh. uh, we do something in the mountains called kilt greens uh, which is basically... I, say, uh, I don't know what kilt greens are. <laughs> <laughs> so kilt greens are basically we take creasy greens. Um, and then I've heard smoke. that. Okay. I've heard creasy greens. Okay <laughs> and so we'll throw them you can use whatever green you like uh, into uh, hot fat. Um, now that's basically a, a, a take on this. Um, we are just about ready to add the vinegar. Okay. Um, so this is just regular old apple cider vinegar? That is regular old apple cider vinegar made with North in. Carolina apples. Go ahead and put it in. Um, I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. Um, Any seasoning I need to do? Uh, we'll add a little salt and pepper to the um, greens before oh, we it, toss them with the, uh, with the vinaigrette. Okay. Now what is this? This looks interesting. Um, that is uh, our smoked tomato jam made with Haywood County tomatoes. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to add that. That's where the, the smoked tomato jam or the smoked tomato vinaigrette um, gets, its get, name. gets its name. Um, but yeah, if you, you can go ahead and add that in. All of it? All of it. Okay, and then if you, I'll take that, and if you'll go ahead and Just combine that all together, get, combine that all together. The um, the jam will melt down. Okay. Oh, thickens up the sauce a little bit. It does. Vinaigrette a little bit. It does. Let me hold that pan for you. That's looking great. Okay, Lisa. Now our vinaigrette is finished. If you will toss these lovely mixed greens from MR Gardens in Asheville. Uh, that will it smells wonderful. I like the uh, the tangy aroma. Yeah, and that's a combination of the apple cider vinegar. Do I put and this on the, the plate? Yeah, go ahead and put that on the plate, and I'll top it with our fish that we just finished cooking. Maybe a little, a little bit, bit more. more. Yeah, Is one more good? good scoop. One more good scoop. There we go. And we place the fillet on top. And I can give it a try. Be my guest. Lucky me. This is the hard part of my job. <laughs> Gotta just get one leaf, you know. I'm cooking fish for dinner. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Charles, I love basil in the summer. What are we making? We are going to make a lime basil marinade uh, mm -hmm. for the trout, which I love to grill in the summertime. Okay. Uh, today we're actually we're going to sear it in the pan. Um, you can also put it in the broiler. So while I chop the basil, if you'll go ahead and start adding the other ingredients, I can do please. that. I'm guessing got me some garlic. Oh yeah, fresh Light chopped garlic, garlic. Fresh chopped garlic, and then olive oil. About how much? Uh, about a quarter of a cup. Okay. And lime juice. Yes, fresh squeezed lime juice. 
and then some seasoning salt. That's just about an eighth of a teaspoon okay. and I just throw in the rough chopped basil. I love this thing. <laughs> That's a great... Instant pepper grinder. And if you'll just mix that up and pour it over the fish. All right, and then how long will this marinade, did you say? Uh, at least an hour, but you can do it overnight. Um, just wrap it uh, with uh, plastic wrap and put it in the fridge. Sounds good. Right, Lisa, our fish is marinated. Our pan is nice and hot, and so is our oil, so I'll go ahead and add the fish. And how long do you cook that? About three minutes a side. Okay, all right. And if you were doing this in the summertime, what would you serve it with? Uh, I would be doing this on the grill, maybe with some grilled vegetables and an ear of fresh corn. Mm, sounds good to me. All right, and here's the finished product. Give that a taste and let me know what you think. It looks fabulous. Look how flaky that is. The lime and the basil, fresh. Oh, it says summer. That it is does. good. Thank you. Delicious. I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs>Lisa, this is one of my daughter's favorite recipes and one of mine. It's the uh, quick, easy, and lusty trout. It takes very little time to prepare and oftentimes we'll do it on a weeknight. Okay, so what do I need to do? Okay, first thing, uh, you'll take your seasoning there and... What spread, is this? Uh, that's a mix of a seasoned salt and a crab boil. Okay. Um, just sprinkle that. That's perfect right there. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to sprinkle a little bit of uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice on there. Um, one more little spoonful. Great. Okay. And then comes the lusty part. What makes it lusty? Lusty Monk Mustard. And what? that's a North Carolina product? That is a uh, North Carolina product made in Asheville. Okay, but you could use any grainy mustard. Any whole saying. grain mustard that you like um, it will do well. Or if you wanted to uh, use a Dijon, um, that's not a whole grain mustard. would work well. All right, is that enough? Uh, let's get a little bit more. A little bit more? Yeah. Let me get in there and, and... Fix that up. I'll fix this up just a little bit. You did such a great job with the other. And after I show you this... All right. And once we've added the mustard, what do we do? It's ready to go under the broiler that we've preheated. Uh, for how long? About five to seven minutes. Well, that's quick. Let's go. What a beautiful dinner presentation in five minutes. Five minutes. And that's why you should cook fish for dinner. Absolutely. Charles, what a beautiful and colorful display you've got right here. What are we going to do with this? We are going to make cold smoked trout wraps. Oh, that sounds good. Okay, first you start with a uh, tortilla. You okay. can use flour or a spinach flavored. Okay. Um, next, we've got our um, goat cheese mixed with Hudson's smoked tomato jam. Oh. Uh, we're going to spread um, that on about three quarters of the tortilla and that's going to act like um, a glue. Okay. As well as a flavoring. Am I doing that far enough? That Not looks, far enough. That's Are perfect. Okay? okay. That is great. Not quite three quarters, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I won't get out the ruler. <laughs> Okay, the next thing is you'll add your cold smoked trout, okay. uh, about an ounce. Just uh, across the center or what? Um, yeah, you... that's that's great right there. Um, is that good? Yeah, let's have one more piece. Yeah, I did Great, too. that's great. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to turn it just a little bit okay. so when, it'll make it easier to roll up. In here you can add lettuce uh -huh. or sprouts, uh, depending on what's in season. Uh, you may go with lettuce. I'll go with lettuce. Okay. Okay. Very nice. The next part is we're going to roll this up. Okay. okay? So if you'll start take, rolling like this. Yep. Yeah, take that flap over, and at this point, we're going to want to tuck the sides in. Okay. Okay. Tuck and tuck. And keep, keep rolling. rolling. Nicely done. Okay. And there's our finished roll up. And while you cut that in half, mm -hmm. I'm going to work on a fun way to serve this. Okay, I've filled this martini glass with sprouts. If you'll go ahead and put your sandwich in there. Oh, isn't that perfect for lunch? 
Charles, I've had a fabulous time. I've had a great time too. Cheers, Cheers. to you. <laughs> it's been a great trip to Sunburst Trout Farm. I love learning the stories of successful farms like Sunburst and the creative ways they're taking their business to the next level. One tasty idea at a time. It just goes to show, agriculture in North Carolina doesn't always mean cultivating the land. Sometimes it means gathering your harvest from the water. I'm Lisa Prince, and I'll see you next time right here in Flavor NC. To see today's recipes or for more information on local food and farmers markets in your area, visit FlavorNC.com. Flavor NC was made possible by Got to be NC Agriculture, the official state identity program for products grown and processed by farmers and value-added food companies in North Carolina. When you want the best, it's got to be NC. The Currituck County Department of Travel and Tourism. The Currituck County Outer Banks. More value, more excitement, more than you imagined. Additional support was provided by the following. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.